Sir so you like Mehman? And Gulam Rabbani, both of them happen to be my very good friends, ladies and gentlemen. I have not been very well lately and was avoiding coming to such gatherings also. But when Akhun sent me a note and the occasion was about Siraj, I couldn't say no. So here I have penned down some random thoughts. I have known Siraj Ulak Memon since about early 1969, when I was planning to launch my Sindhi Progressive Weekly Subhasen and seeking cooperation from my friends and well-wishers. The inspiration for launching this paper had come from Sain G.M. Sayyad and Rashti brothers, mainly Pir Ali Mahmud Rashti, with whom I had worked in the Sindh Observer way back in 1948 and 49. Active cooperation, though I had received from such intellectuals as Ibrahim Joyo, a friend of my eldest brother, Dr. Sadiq, and Pir Hussamuddin Rashti, who agreed to contribute an interesting and long article for the inaugural issue of the weekly. Subhasin came out on the historical day, commemorating the breakup of the one unit and re-emergence of Sindh in, and other provinces in West Pakistan. Siraj was one of the intellectuals and writers who encouraged me in Subhasin and advised me to reserve a couple of pages in the weekly to the literary writings of the new writers and poets in Sindh. So was the advice of Pir Hussamuddin Rashti, Ibrahim Joyo, and Nuruddin Sarki also, whom I had also known earlier as a younger friend of my brother. I take genuine pride in the fact that many present-day Sindhi writers, especially amongst poets, were introduced by the Subhasint. I later came to know Siraj more closely when I sponsored Shah Abdul Latif Cultural Society in Karachi as its founder, honorary secretary, with my mentor and friend, Dr. J. Makri, as the society's thinker, and Sayyid Ghulam Mustafa Shah as its president. One of the aims of Shah Abdul Latif Culture Society, and of course the paramount aim, was to promote an understanding between the two cultural groups of Sindh, namely Sindhi and Urdu-speaking population, in the light of the Sufis' teachings of Shah Latif. I am really proud of having had the unique privilege of knowing the galaxy of Sindhi intellectuals and luminaries from all shades of society, politicians, educationists, intellectuals, and writers. These included such towering personalities as Sheikh Abdul Majid Sindhi, G.M. Sayyad, Pir Hussamuddin Rashti, Dr. Nabi Baj Baloch, Sayyid Ghulam Mustafa Shah, Ibrahim Joyo, Sheikh Ayaz, Jamal Ablo, M.H. Pama, Dr. Ghulam Ali Lana, and I'm in the younger ones, Siraj Ulhaq Mehman, and my very good friend, Ghulam Rabbani Agro. Siraj Ulhaq Mehman, in my estimation, is a genuine intellectual, though I must admit that he has not attained those heights which he could have achieved if he had given more time and effort in terms of sweat and sincere hard labor. Siraj has been writing short stories and novels which have been acknowledged as much above the normal by his compeers. One, way, one of his novels, I believe, got a prize also from the Pakistan Academy of Letters. But his main field, which appeals to me foremost, is his research and that too in trying to solving the enigmatic riddle of the Indus seals. It was about in early 1972 when I happened to come to know that Siraj has done some work on the ancient Sindhi language, especially on the Indus seals. I must say that when I got hold of this book named Sindhi Boli, I found the book so interesting that I did not leave it until I had finished it. The other book which I had read with so much interest and passion was Kadim Sindh by Bhairum and Mehrchand Advani. I wish someone will translate these two books in Urdu and I shall gladly publish these books under the umbrella of my publishing house, Sindhi Kitab Ghar, which, which I have lovingly named Sindhi Kitab Ghar. I've already published a large number of scholarly books during the last 10 years, including a reprint of Shah Latif, His Times and Poetry by Watan Malalwani, another reprint of Shah Latif of Bid by H.T. Sorle, Shahji Boli in Sindhi by my young friend Aftab Ablo, 
and Shakarim's translation in English by Dr. Jyoti Lal Motwani, a friend of mine in Delhi, India. The latest book which I published is a scholarly treatise on Lake Mancha, written by Tarsa Rai, with an introduction by late Dr. J. Makri. Incidentally, this is the last scholarly work of my friend Dr. Makri. I'm sure the present company would be knowing Dr. Makri, whose two books, Makri's Jamazameen in Sindhi and Sorrows of Sindh in English, have been published by Ibrahim Joyosar. In his book, Sindhi Boli, Srajul Maman has himself admitted that he has just made an effort to decipher the indices and he has left it to other scholars to pursue his pioneering research effort. I must say that Siraj, in making an effort to solve the riddle of the indices, have treated on a path on which the angels will burn their wings. Ever since these enigmatic seals were found, first at Harappa and then at Point Rizaro, efforts have been made in India and are being made in India USSR and the Scandinavian countries to decipher these seals. Now and then announcements have been made by scholars here and there, sometimes even by juvenile apistars, claiming that they have made a breakthrough. The most methodical and scientific effort in this regard is being made in Finland under a program funded by the Scandinavian Institute of Asian Studies. The chief researcher is one Mr. Asko Papala, whom his friends call Ashoka Papala and his wife, both well-versed in Dravidian languages, especially Tamil. I've had the privilege of being Asko's guest twice in Helsinki in his house and taking food with his family. He has been working on the industries for more than 15 years, perhaps more, and with all the encouragement in money and resources that the University of Finland and the Scandinavian Institute can provide, he told me last time when I visited him some 10 years back that he is still far from his cherished goal of the disarmament of the Indus language. There is a consensus among the scholars in India, Russia and Finland and UK presently engaged in research on the subject. And Asko Papla also subscribes to this view that the riddle of the Indus seals and of the language of Mahandradaro will not be solved unless someone somewhere does find the Rosetta stone which provided the key to the language of Egypt, the so-called bird language. Frankly, I often wonder how could a young man that Siraj was in early 60s, without money and his specialized training, could write a book like the Sindhi Boli. The book was published in 1964. I very much wish that the government may requisition his services for a minimum period of five years and allow him completest possible freedom to travel wherever he would like to, India, UK, Russia, Sweden, Finland, America, or anywhere else, to conduct his studies in peace, with dedicated passion, and without any worries for himself or his family. I'm inclined to believe that something tangible may come out of this exercise. Incidentally, during my talks with Ashoka Patula, which I, which I admit were far from scholarly, as both he and I knew well of my limitations in scholarship of such a specialized subject as the decipherment of the enigmatic Indus seals, Asko several times made this point that if anyone in Sindh did impress him with any insight into the riddle, he was none else but my friend, our friend, Sirajulak Maman. Let us pray for his li long life and try to give him that peace and leisure which is required for such an uphill task. In the end, I would like to share a secret with you, my friends. It's personal. Many of my friends and acquaintances often wonder how an Urdu-speaking immigrant from UP India has, after permanently setting down in Karachi, devoted himself to the cause of Sindh and Sindhology. As a member of the governing board of the Institute of Sindhology in the University of Sindh, I've edited and published the Sindhological Studies for nearly a decade, purely in an honorary capacity, not charging a penny for my services. The secret is that I come from Meerut in the Doab of Ganga Jamna, where, according to Sir Mortimer Wheeler, diggings at the village of Alamgirpur in the Jamna Basin, a few miles 
west of Meerut, 30 miles from Delhi, 600 miles eastward of Manjadaru, have revealed unmistakable Indus material. According to Sarvila, further excavation of the Jamna Ganga Dwab may indeed provide before long that by a sort of pincer movement, the Indus civilization circumvented the Thar or Indian desert, then doubtless appreciably smaller than today on both sides, and so reached the formative regions of the classical civilizations of Hindustan in the north and center of the subcontinent. In my case, therefore, it may mean a sort of a return of the prodigal son to his native home. <laughs>